Hi, this is Adam Kuo here. And if you've been reading or watching the mainstream news, you may be freaking out right now because in the news, all they're talking about is that the yield curve has inverted and they're talking about a recession coming, a stock market crash. So is there any truth to this, right? Uh, is a stock market crash, is a recession imminent? So let's look at the facts right now before we make a decision. Well, first, let's take a look at the news from yesterday, right? And again, it's all doom and gloom from, you know, CNBC to CNN. They all saying it's the end of the world, right? So on CNBC, they're saying that the Dow Jones drops 800 points as Wall Street suffers worst day of the year on recession fears. The market sell-off was a response to the yield curve inversion in government bonds, right? CNN says... Dow tumbles 800 points after the bond market flashes a recession warning, which again is the inversion of the yield curve in the bond market. All right, global stocks slide as bond market send recession warning. That's on Reuters and CNN says five of the world's biggest economies are at the risk of a recession. But of course, you've got people like Janet Yellen from the previous Fed chair that says, well, you know, this yield curve inversion may not be a recession signal this time. Okay, now you can't blame most retail investors from freaking out over the news and selling in panic. But should you sell in panic? Should you get out of the market, sell all your stock, or should you buy more, or should you hold? Let's look at the facts right now. Remember, in order to succeed as an investor or trader, you never make decisions, you never act based on emotions or panic. You always disassociate, look at the facts, and make your decision. So let's look at the facts right now. Now, first of all, an inverted yield curve has correctly signaled all nine recessions since 1955 and was only wrong once. And the fact is that when a yield curve goes negative, there's a 90% chance of a recession starting within the next 17 months or so. Now, that sounds really scary, but I'm going to explain in this video why you should not sell stocks right now. In fact, you could even buy stocks right now, so just hold on to your horses. Now, first of all, What's a yield curve? For those of you who don't know what's a yield curve, it's a curve, right? That plots the yield, which is interest rates, against the time to maturity of US government bonds, or known as US Treasury bonds, right? So in a normal yield curve or normal situation, it's sloping upwards in this case, sloping up, right? Where bonds that have a Shorter time to maturity, example, the two-year bond commands a lower interest rate than a longer-term bond like the 10-year bond. Okay, now this makes a lot of sense. Why? Because obviously, if you buy a long-term bond, it means you're lending money to the government in the long run, you demand a higher interest rate because your money is locked in for a long time, right? But if you lend money, for the shorter term, you don't mind a lower interest rate. So that's a normal yield curve. An inverted yield curve happens when it is the reverse. Now, the two-year bond commands a higher interest rate than the long-term 10-year bond. So what this means is now, if you lend money to the government for 10 years, you get less interest than lending money to the government for just three months or two years, okay? So what causes this yield curve inversion and what does it mean, all right? Now, first of all, how is yield calculated? Yield is also known as the interest rate. The yield is equal to the interest that you get, right? The interest that you're paid by the government divided by the price of the bond. Now, what happens is that when bond prices increase, when the price of the bond increases, what happens? That's right. The yield, the, the interest rate you get drops. Okay? So what causes the inverted yield curve is that the long-term bond yield has been dropping below the short-term bond. What causes the yield to drop is because the price of the long-term bond has been increasing. Why? Because many institutions many people have been buying the long-term bond. And by buying the long-term bond, demand has pushed up the price of the bond and has caused the yield to drop and hence lower than the short-term yield, causing the curve to invert. So what does it mean? 
why have been why have a lot of people been buying the ten year bond? It's because they are scared. It's because they are fearful of a recession. They want to lock in their money into a bond which is a fixed interest. So they buy the long term bond, causing the price to go up, causing the yield to drop and the in, the yield curve to invert. So it's a sign that people are scared. It's a signal of a recession. All right. So basically, if you take the uh, ten year interest. All right, 10 year yield, and you minus, you deduct the two year yield, right? If you deduct it, if you get a negative figure, it means the yield curve has inverted. If it's a positive figure, 10 minus two, which means it is not inverted, right? And here's the thing, it recently inverted, guess what? For just a few minutes, right? It inverted yesterday for just a few minutes, right? So let's take a quick look right now. So this is the spread between the two-year and 10-year bond, which is basically the 10-year yield minus the two-year yield. And you can see that usually it is positive, okay? Now, the last time which it inverted was over here. It started the inversion in December of 2005, and that predicted the recession that started in 2007 over here. So what has happened now that we're in 2019 is that the yield between the two and 10 year, which means the 10 year minus the two year has just turned negative, okay? But it only went negative for a couple of minutes intraday yesterday, but now it has actually gone back up again, all right? So in fact, if you look at this chart, you can see this is the two year interest or the yield and this is the 10-year interest rate. And as of now, which is, um, today's the 15th, right? As of yesterday's close, you can see the 10-year is back above the two-year. So it has uninverted already, right? But the point is that this guy, the 10-year went below the two-year briefly yesterday, and that freaked people out. It's, oh my God, and they sold. <laughs> So the first thing to not be so concerned about is that it just went inversion for just a few minutes, all right? For it to really signal a recession, it has got to invert and stay inverted for a few months. Like you can see over here, it stayed inverted for about two and a half years. But this was only a slight inversion for just a few minutes, right? So that's the first thing to pay attention to, right? Unless it stays down there for many months, a recession is not going to come. Right now, even if it does stay down there and a recession is coming, is the yield curve inversion a good way to time the market? Should we sell our stock right now, right, in response to it? And the answer is no, right? Why? Why no? Why shouldn't we use this signal to sell? Well, let's take a closer look right now. Now, you can see that historically, whenever the yield curve inverts, a recession starts not immediately. It takes a couple of months for the recession to begin. So going back to 1978, August, the yield curve inverted. Recession started January 1980, 17 months later, all right? Uh, yield curve again inverted, September 1980. Recession started 10 months later, and so on and so forth. And most recently, the yield curve inverted in December of 2005. And the actual recession started in December 2007, which is about 24 months later. So on average, it takes about 16 months from an inversion to the recession. Now, at the same time, the stock market doesn't start going down only when the recession happens. In fact, the stock market starts to reverse into a downtrend a couple of months before the actual recession because the stock market is a leading indicator of the economic cycle. The stock market tends to move three to six months or even nine months ahead of the economic cycle. You know, take a look at this table right here and you can see again, historically, when the yield curve inverted, the stock market started to change its trend to go down only a couple of months later. And it's really different from time to time. So when the yield curve inverted, August 78, the stock market started to plunge only uh, 19 months later, 
19 months later, that was more than one and a half years later of, of the market going up before it went down, right? And most recently, you can see that when the yield curve inverted in December 2005, when did the stock market start coming down? Not immediately. In fact, the stock market started to change the trend only in October 2007, which is 23 months later, almost two years later, right? So the lag time between the top of the market and the yield curve inversion is all over the shop, right? Sometimes it's as short as two months, as long as 23 months. And that's why using the yield curve to time the time to get out of the market doesn't make sense because is it two months later, is it two years later, right? So how do I time the markets? How do I know it's the best time to get out and the best time to get back in? I rely purely on technical analysis of price action or price trend. So let me teach you right now how I do it and how you can do it for your own portfolio. So let's take a look at the last recession and the last inversion and the last stock market crash, see what we can learn from it, right? So the last one happened more than 10 years ago. And again, the yield curve inverted on December 2005. So once the yield curve inverted, when did the stock market actually reverse into a downtrend and start crashing? It started reversing only 23 months later. Uh, in October or on, on October 2007 over here where the market made a top, right? So what does it mean? It means that if you had uh, sold when the yield curve inverted over here, guess what? For the next 23 months, you would have been out of the market. You would have missed the 25.6% return on your portfolio, all right? So you can see that by, you know, uh, look at the yield curve, you're not getting out at the best time. So when would you want to get out of the market or to protect your portfolio? And the answer is you want to get out or protect your portfolio somewhere around here, right? Somewhere around here, just before the market goes into a bear market, before it goes into a severe downtrend. And the question would be, how would I know that it's going down? I mean, hindsight is 2020, but at that time, how would I know that the trend has changed? Well, really simple. There are a few things I use. Number one, I look at price action, which is the uh, patterns of price movement. I use trend lines and I use moving averages. I'm gonna show you how you can combine all three right now. Okay, so first of all, you gotta understand that how do you define an uptrend? Okay, an uptrend is defined as a pattern of higher highs and higher lows, right? So an uptrend looks like that. There's an uptrend, right? So the price makes a series of higher highs and a series of higher lows. So we call this a bull market. And the bull market reverses into a bear market when we see a change in the price action. From higher highs and higher lows, it makes lower highs and lower lows. Again, let me kind of um, draw this out for you. So this is a high over there, that's a high. It makes a higher high, it makes a higher high. It's a low, it makes a higher low, a higher low, right? And it makes the top, right? And from the high, it makes a lower high and a lower high. So I'm always looking at the pattern of highs and lows to see if the trend is still an uptrend or a downtrend. Now, take a look at this over here. You can see that this is a high, right? Makes a higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high, higher low. So as long as I see a pattern of higher highs and higher lows, I know that we are still in a bull market. I stay invested and I watch the stock going up, the market going up. Now over here, you can see the market makes a top and from a higher high, it makes a lower high, a lower high, a lower high, a lower high, and lower low and lower low and lower low and lower low, okay? So from this pattern, you can see a shift in the price action. 
Now, some of you may say, but Adam, sometimes it's not really clear, right? Like, for example, you may say, hey, um, over here, from this high, it made a lower high. It made a lower high. So why isn't that a downtrend, right? Or, it, it, you know, from over here, it made a lower high over here. Or from here, it made a lower high. It made, um, yeah, you know, a lower high over there. So how do you tell, right? Okay, here's my secret, right? <laughs> Ready? Secret number one, you have to see four lower highs in sequence. Only when you see four lower highs in a row, it's a signal of a change in trend. Four in a row. So check it out. Over here, you can see that it's a high. That's a lower high. That's only one, all right? From over here to here, that's only one. From here to here, that's only one. And from here to here, it's one two and only three we don't have four in a row right check it out one two two lower highs in a row we don't have four in a row but check it out from here we have got a high right we have got a lower high we have got a lower high and a lower high there we have it we have got the first high one two three and four that's right so when you get four lower highs in a in a row it's a very high probability that the price action or the trend is reversed and that is when you want to sell everything or to hedge your portfolio using put options we'll talk about in a while before the bear market goes all the way down, right? So that's the first thing I look at. Do I have four lower highs in a row? The second thing which I look at are what we call trend lines, right? So this is known as a trend line where you can see the price if you connect previous low points, it's kind of like a level of support where the price is bouncing off the support, right? So we call that support, 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 support. Now, the moment it breaks the support, it's kind of like as long as the car is on the road, you stay in the car. The moment the car drives off the road, get out of the car because the car's going to crash down the hill, right? So you can see over here that the car has driven off the road. That could be a time to get out as well, to sell everything or to hedge your portfolio, right? Those of you who understand technical analysis, uh, technical analysis will know that when support is broken, it becomes resistance, right? That over here you can see this is the support that's broken and it goes up, it becomes a resistance, hits the resistance and comes back down again. So this could also have been a time to exit when the support has become resistance, hits the resistance, reverses, and you exit over there. So that's the second method I use. The third method I use is the simplest method using moving averages. Now, for those of you who have been watching my videos before, you know that to identify the big trends, I use the 50 and 150 simple moving average. So the 50 moving average is the one in blue. That's the 50 moving average. The one here in blue, 50. And the one in green is the 150 moving average. Okay. Now the rule is pretty simple. Whenever the blue line is above the green line and it's sloping up, it's a confirmed uptrend. A downtrend is signal when the 50 crosses below the 150. In other words, the blue line crosses below the green line and both lines start to slope down. Now, the slope is very important. Some people think that, okay, if the 50 crosses below the 150, it's a downtrend. That's not true. If the 50 crosses below the 150, but the lines are still sloping up, that's not a downtrend signal. It has to be accompanied by a change in the slope. Really important stuff, all right? So you can see that by using the moving averages, it can tell us again the change in trend. So over here, you can see that this was a very clear uptrend. Why? Because the 50 blue line is above the 150 green line. So that's a very clear uptrend. Now over here, you can see that there was a cross 50 crossing below the 150, right? So uh, would that have been a sell signal? Yeah, sure. Why not? Right? So you could have, for example, bought, you know, somewhere over here, all right, a lot earlier and you sold it there, and you have taken a very nice profit from the market, right? And the moment you sold, what happened? It crossed back above again, 50 is above the 150, so you would buy it back over here because that's an uptrend signal, right? 
So you buy back over here, and over here, what would you do? That's right, 50 crossing 150, sloping down, you would sell over there. So that would be another signal, right? So it could have bought there, sold there, sold here, get out before the crash. As long as the 50 remains below the 150, the trend remains down. Now, when would you buy back? You buy back when, again, the blue line crosses back above the green line and it starts sloping upwards. So fast forward to about one and a half years later, that's what would have happened, right? So you have, again, crossed over, uh, sold everything over there, right? Let it crash all the way down. That was a 56% drop during the financial crisis. It took about 18 months for the market to bottom in February 2009. And over here, when you see, again, a change in the trend, 50 crossing above the 150, uh, sloping up, you would have bought back over there when the S&P was at about 950 points. And if you had held that all the way, now the S&P is about 2,800 points. All right. So you can see that moving averages are also very, very powerful. Now you may ask me, Adam, which one do you use? Do you use the price action? Do you use the trend line? Do you use moving averages? And the answer is this. I use all three at the same time, right? So when I combine all three, I can do time the markets with precision. Now, if you think that this is pretty powerful, let me tell you that this is the kindergarten stuff. This is why I teach kindergarten kids, right? Uh, for those of you who have attended my live Wealth Academy program or have taken my online training, you know that this is basic stuff, right? When you actually come for my training, I teach you even more powerful stuff of how you time the markets with even more accuracy. But for those of you watching this, this is good enough for you to, you know, get out at the right time and get back in at the right time. All right, so let's take a look at the charts right now. So this is the S&P 500, and as of yesterday, you can see that we had a pretty big close down yesterday, right? And a big drop in the market says that people are panicking. Oh my God, the market has collapsed. Hello, it did not collapse. It's just a small drop. <laughs> Get over it, right? So you got to look at the charts. Now again, right now, um, as of yesterday again, we had the yield curve uh, inverting for the first time in a long time, right? For just a few minutes, right? What's the big deal? Anyway, so the yield curve inverted there. Do we sell? Well, again, let's look at the price action. Are we making lower highs and lower lows? Are we having four lower highs in a row? No, we are not, right? So you can see that that was the highest point. Uh, this is the lower high. So we count that as one, we count that as two, and again, not yet, right? We need two more lower highs to signal a downtrend. We are not there yet, right? Now, how about using the moving averages? So let's put in the moving averages. Um, ready, ta-da, there we go, all right? Um, Sometimes it doesn't draw very well. Okay, let's go back there. Okay, so based on the moving averages, you can see that, um, yep, the 50 moving average, the blue is still above the green and it's still sloping upwards and the price is above the 200 moving average. And yes, we are still on a pretty, pretty um, clear uptrend right now, right? The trend has not changed at least for the big picture, right? In fact, you can see that after yesterday's drop, it is now finding a support at the 150 moving average, right? The 150, the green line, looks like a strong support bouncing off, bouncing off and bouncing off. So it looks like it's being supported right now. So uh, as of now, again, we can't predict the future. I'm not a fortune teller. I can't predict the future, but all I can do is to read the trend. Right, uptrend we buy, downtrend we get out, or we hedge our portfolio. So for now, we're still on a major uptrend, and probability is that we should see higher prices going up. But again, anything could happen, right? Anything could happen. It could always break below, and the 50 could cross below the 150 eventually, signaling a downtrend, a bear market, and yes, that's the time when well, you could protect your portfolio by buying put options, inverse ETFs, or you could sell everything and buy everything back again when the market bottoms. You can do all those things, right? So I'll talk more about that in uh, future videos. At the same time, if you're taking the live Wealth Academy program or attending my online classes, you're going to learn a lot more about how to manage 
individual stocks in your portfolio. Now, while the medium to long-term trend remains up, of course, the short-term trend is currently down right now. So to look at the short-term trend, I use shorter-term moving averages like the uh, 2040 exponential moving average, uh, which is over here. Let me just put it in over there. There we go. So you can see, let me just zoom in a bit, all right? So this uh, red and blue dotted lines are the 20 and 40 exponential moving average. It's for me to read the short term trend. So you can see in the short term, the 20 has crossed below the 40, indicating a short term correction, short term dip or downtrend, but the overall trend is still up. So what I do is when I see a short term downtrend, yeah, I'm holding on to my investments because I know they're going up over time, but in the short term, could I make some money as the market's coming down? Yeah, so what I do is I buy uh, put options or put option spreads. So please learn how to use options so you can make some extra income while the market's coming down while holding on to your investment portfolio. All right, so let me give you an example. So the moment I started to see the market correcting, I started to buy some of these put option spreads to make some extra income and to sell covered call options. So, um, so you can see one of my portfolios, uh, overall, I am long on the market, right? I've got long investment, investment positions, but at the same time, I also have got short positions where I'm short the market. So that means when a market goes down in the short term, my short positions are generating profits for me. And over here, you can see uh, my short positions, I sell calls against my stock. These are selling covered calls and you can see the unrealized profit from these calls, right? These are put options, which I just bought uh, about two days ago. So I bought a few put options to generate the unrealized uh, profits over here in order to hedge or protect some of my short-term uh, losses from the stock position. So the stocks I own, they may go down temporarily. So you see a negative over there, but by using put options and selling covered calls, it generates enough profit to cover the short-term uh, drop in my investment position. So as a result, uh, you can see that for the year, year to date, I'm still up about 20% uh, for the year, right? I was up about 40%, but because of the correction, down a bit to 20%, but still positive for the year, right? And I have to manage many portfolios and I have to do all this for all my portfolios. So this is... And these are the things that I teach my students in our live classes, in our online classes, how to manage their portfolios so they generate consistently high returns with low risk and to protect themselves during a bear market. So what if this bull market really changes into a bear market and we go into a major downtrend? Now, I don't think it's going to happen, but you never know it could happen now. So if we go into a bear market, what do you do? Well, it depends. If you're a short-term trader, like I've got a short-term trading portfolio, you obviously will not take any more long trades. In fact, your trades may hit the stop loss and you get out, right? And you, you just take short trades where you profit by going short the market. Now, if you're more of an investor or if you've got an investment portfolio, like for me, I've got this investment portfolio, what do I do? Well, here's the thing. If you have bought fundamentally good companies, you don't have to worry, right? So if you've taken my value momentum investing course, you know that I only buy very good businesses that are fundamentally strong so that I know that over time, they will always go up. So, you know, no worries, just hang on to it. You know, it's short-term turbulence, you'll always go higher. So for example, what's, what are some of the companies which uh, are great companies? Like, um, uh, for example, now, by the way, if you look at this chart, this is the 15-year chart, of the S&P 500. And you know that in the long run, the stock market always goes up. It always goes up, right? So regardless of short-term bear markets, recessions, crashes, it will always go up. And that's if you buy every single stock in the index. But if you know how to select the best companies, you know that it's gonna perform even better than the index, right? So in the last 15 years, for example, if you had bought a great company like McDonald's, you can see McDonald's, despite the recession and the trade war, it has done really, really well, right? From 20 bucks to $221, right? And this is the last 15 years going through many crises and going through the financial crisis. And um, 
this Amazon, again, for the last 15 years, again, going through the financial crisis back in 2008, but from 100 bucks to now over or almost $2,000 on Amazon, right? Um, or Google, Alphabet, right? Again, from $90 or rather 48 bucks from a low of $48, again, going through the financial crisis, you just hold it, you know, in the long run, it's now over $1,000. So if you, you own good companies, no worries. Just close your eyes, hold it, you'll go higher eventually, right? Just, um, just have the confidence that, you know, companies will grow in the future. But again, in the short term, could you make some extra money while it goes down temporarily? Yeah, you could by, again, selling covered calls or buying put options. Now, you know nothing about options, do check out my free option videos on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Options Trading Adam Koo. Go to my playlist, under my playlist, look for Options Trading, find out more about options, find out more about the stock market, stock investing, stock trading, and there's so much to learn for you to build your portfolio. So I hope you've learned something over here. Do subscribe to more videos or check out my uh, websites for more information about our training programs. Adam Koo, I'll see you soon. May the markets be with you. Hey, if you like this video, do remember to hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to find out more about my online uh, professional trading courses like the Professional Forex Trading Course, Value Momentum Investing Course, Professional Stock Trading Course, or Professional Options Trading Course, go on to piranaprofits.com and learn to trade like a professional and generate income from anywhere in the world. If you're in Asia, like to travel to Asia, check out wealthacademyglobal.com where I teach people live in my Wealth Academy programs. So may the markets be with you and take care and generate the profits you deserve.